Hello guys, welcome to my 2022 favorites video. Products that I'm about to show you are the best of the best of the best from this year. I was really very careful and very intentional about curating this list because I wanted to show you the things that I've been loving, not just for like a month or two, but for majority of the year or at least several months. There are products and things that I'm obsessed with right now that aren't in this video because I've only liked them for a month or two. Like this is the best of the best of the best. Everything that I'm about to show you are products or tools or books or just miscellaneous things that have really made my 2022 better, more efficient, easier, more enjoyable. I am truly so obsessed with everything I'm about to show you and I'll link everything down in the description box if you want to know where you can get any of these things check down there. I'm gonna start with a couple cosmetic things just to get them out of the way. I started getting Dysport about a year ago. I think I got it like December 15th, 2021 was the first time. Dysport is definitely a favorite of mine this year. I'm not encouraging you to get it. I'm not telling you to get it. I'm just being truthful. I really, really love it. I get 20 units in my forehead every three or four months and I love the way it makes my skin look. My injector says that Dysport isn't supposed to change your skin texture or make your skin better, but I just swear that it does. Not only does it make my forehead smooth, but it genuinely improves my skin, and I really love that. And then the other thing is gonna be this balayage. This is the third balayage that I've had this year, and it's also like the best one. I went to a blonding specialist, and I got a color correction from the last two balayages, and then I got this one, and I really love it. This is the lightest that my hair has ever been, and for me, this is like, a blondie moment, but I wouldn't have been able to get this light because my natural hair color is right up here. You can see it's almost black, it's very dark. I wouldn't have been able to get this color if I hadn't had the two previous balayages, and I'm glad that I did it kind of slowly. I got my first balayage in January of this year, and then I just got this one done. And I think that bleaching my hair slowly over the course of an entire year has definitely helped preserve the health and the length of it because I like my hair long. I mean, don't get me wrong, like there's more damage than there used to be, of course. I have more split ends now, of course, but overall my hair is pretty soft and it's very strong and that's definitely because I took it slow and I bleached it over the course of the year. So Dysport and balayages, cosmetic faves. Now let's move on to the stuff that I can show you. This is not gonna be in any particular order. I didn't separate these products out in terms of category or what they are. And these are also not ranked. Like I'm, the first thing I show you is not my number one product, etc. In no particular order, I'm just gonna grab things off my desk and show them to you. Number one, this is the Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Bum Bum Cream in the original scent. And this is a product that really took me by surprise this year because I tried it last year and I absolutely hated it. This is a very sweet gourmand. It's like a salted caramel vanilla, like very sweet and very strong scent. And when I tried it over a year ago, it just wasn't for me. In fact, I really thought it was too strong and too overpowering. And I got a sample of it in a little Sephora, like a birthday gift this year. And I tried it again and I just was obsessed with it. And I have no idea why my I don't know, my perception of different smells and different fragrances changed so much, but now I can't get enough of it. So this is my absolute favorite body cream. I love the texture of it. It just feels so thick and luxurious and moisturizing. I even have a body spray and a body wash in this exact scent. And I just can't believe that this is making it onto my 2022 favorites because the first time I tried it, I never would have seen that coming. But I'm a full convert now, I get it. Second thing is going to be my Stanley Cup. This is the 2.0 version and it's also the second Stanley Cup that I've gotten this year. The 2.0 version has something in the top that makes the straw stick in a little bit better. However, it does still leak. Like if you have a Stanley Cup, you know if you turn it over, it will, yeah. Okay, well, obviously it leaks out the straw, but it will leak a little bit out of the top if it tips, but the 2.0 version is definitely better. Either way, I've really loved both the original and this one. They are 40 ounces. They keep ice cold for literally 24 hours, not an exaggeration. The bottom is tapered, so it fits in a cup holder in your average size car, and I love the handle. It's just, it's beautiful. This one is a pale pink color. My other one is the cream and ivory color, and I drink out of it all day, every single day. I've used it every single day since I got it over the summer and I love it. Okay, next, these ones kind of go together. I've been really into fragrances this year. So another favorite is just my perfume collection and this is not even all of it. I have another one of these 
And I certainly have favorite perfumes, but I'm kind of thinking maybe I should make a favorite perfume and candle video because the other part of this is candles. But I've just been loving fragrances. I've been learning so much about just scent chemistry and I've been growing my perfume collection and my candle collection and I love it. I actually have a candle order from Juicier coming tonight. I don't know if it's Juicier or Juicier, I'm not sure. I have been obsessed with mixing perfumes, layering perfumes, mixing burning candle smells, just making my home and myself smell amazing all the time. I love these two candles. I, these are definitely my top two favorite candles of the year. This is Ash by Boy Smells and this is by The Fireplace by Replica. They're actually very similar scents because they both smell like burning wood. This one is just a little bit more woodsy and this one is a little bit more smoky, if that makes sense. I want to become a sommelier of perfumes. I wanna be a scent master. I don't really know what the word is for this, but I wanna be an expert. I just love it and I love collecting them and I love layering them in new combinations and figuring out new scents that are custom to me. Next we have poppy slash kombucha slash probiotic drinks. I, I think actually this is a prebiotic, so pro and prebiotic drinks. This is not the first time I've shown a poppy in a favorites video, and this is actually the one that I'm drinking right now. I don't really like soda. I like ginger ale. Sometimes I like a Coke Zero with fresh lime, but I'm not gonna drink soda every single day. I just don't think that's good for you. And I have stomach problems. Hot girls have stomach issues. And I drink a kombucha or a poppy every day and I feel like it, not only is it a fun, bubbly beverage, it's like something to look forward to after dinner every night or as an afternoon pick-me-up, but it also, I genuinely think they help my digestion. I pour my kombucha and my poppies into either wine glasses or champagne flutes and it makes, them, it makes the entire experience just feel a little elevated, a little romanticized. I love making everyday experiences a moment because if I don't romanticize the living daylights out of my life, I will be so insanely depressed. So anything I can do to give myself a little boost, a little pick-me-up, I do. They're just amazing. I wish they would sponsor me. If Poppy is watching this, please sponsor me. I am your girl. This is a tripod and it is hands down my favorite tripod. I think you can see a shadow of one of mine right now. I'm sitting in my office and I have two tripods with ring lights over here. Um, this is a portable tripod and I love it. If you are a content creator or an aspiring content creator, I think that this is definitely worth your money. It pops open like this and then the top expands. And as you can see, it expands pretty wide. So it's a good height for me. It's easy to pull up and down. And then this is the part that your phone hooks onto and you can rotate it to any angle that you need really. And then to close it, you just push it down like this. Also, I'm sorry that you can hear my chair squeaking. My chair squeaks every time I move. To close it, you just pop it down like this and it folds up, Ooh. it folds up and it clicks shut and it's very portable. I take this with me when I travel. It's easy to throw in my tote bag if I need to go film content or take pictures outside of the house. I just really love it. I use it almost every single day. I use it every time I film content. Um, if you have seen any of my TikToks where I'm doing like little get ready with me's in the bathroom or whatever, I pop this on the bathroom counter because it's fairly small and I just love it. There is a little remote that you can detach where you can take photos via Bluetooth. I don't really use that feature, but it is there. I highly recommend if you're in the market for something like this. Some people really hated this case because they didn't like the groupings of the holes. They said it made them feel like trypophobic. I love this case. It's just this kind of gray alligator print and it's very sleek and very minimal. I think it looks kind of elegant. I don't think the case does a ton in terms of protecting my MacBook against dropping it or whatever. I mean, I have dropped it I think twice and it's been fine. Here's what the back of the case looks like. But I love it, I th it's very slim. It doesn't make the MacBook take up any extra room in my bag and it is just really beautiful. Okay, next up we have my favorite book series of the year. I wish that I had more books to show you because I read a lot this year. I don't know how many books I read, but I read at least one a week, usually like two or three books a week. And to be honest with you, most of them just didn't wow me. I think the only other two outside of this series that I could tell you about would be The Beautiful Ones and Sirens and Muses. I think those are the only other books I gave five stars to. I'd have to check Literal Club. By the way, I have a literal account. I don't use Goodreads, I don't use Storygraph, although Storygraph does look really cool, but I do use the Literal Club and I do have a book club on there. I'm not as active in it as I should be because I only wanna put books in there that like I like and I just, haven't been liking a ton of books this year and it's really frustrating because I have spent so much money on books. 
I have checked out so many books from the library. If you don't have a library card, you should because free books, amazing. And I just, I don't know, like I just, part of it is that I trusted BookTok for way too long. I think for the first half of the year, I was still getting my book recommendations from BookTok and that just doesn't work for me. Everybody likes something different. Everybody has different opinions and preferences. My criteria for what makes a good book to me just doesn't seem to align with what's super popular on BookTok and I'm not trying to be like pretentious or snobby, it's just the truth. I was an English major, I literally work in editing, I read constantly. I have been reading constantly my entire life. I'm just, you know what, maybe I am snobby, maybe I am pretentious when it comes to books and if that's the case then I guess that's just the case because it's true and Book talk has let me down so many times. Yeah, I will say I like the beautiful ones. I like Sirens and Muses. I don't think either of those were book talk books. And this has been my favorite series, which has been an absolute delight, and I really loved it. It is the Thursday Murder Club series from Richard Osman, and I have all three of them, and I really hope he's writing more. The first one is called The Thursday Murder Club. I've also mentioned these in several of my recent videos, so you probably recognize them. The second one is called The Man Who Died Twice, and then the third one just came out, so I have the hard copy, and it's called The Bullet That Missed. This book series is about a group of retirees in a luxury assisted living community in England. There's several main characters that all have very interesting backstories. One of them used to be a nurse, one of them used to be an MI6 agent, one of them used to be a sort of like TV political guy, and then one of them used to be a psychiatrist, and he also has some like issues of his own. There's also like a con man, a hit man. You know, there's a very like diverse and funny cast of characters. The writing is just charming. Reading these books feels so pleasurable. I don't know. I think that they're written really well, but they're also easy reads. You don't have to think too much about the books. They are presented in a really easy to follow, digestible, accessible way. And yet I think they are so warm. They're so clever and witty and funny. And I just think they're really well done and I love them. The humor is top notch. I've actually recommended the series to my grandmothers because my grandmothers also really like to read. Basically they solve crimes. That was the point. The, the diverse and funny cast of people that I just told you about. Um, solve crimes, they solve murders, and it's just, it's so good. They're also not scary, like they're murder mysteries, but they're not super scary, which is good for me because I am a wuss, and pretty much the only genre of book that I don't enjoy reading is horror. And I'll read literally everything else, but I can't read horror because I'm a scaredy cat, and these are fine for me. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm ever so subtly changing my position throughout this video as the sun changes and goes across the sky. Anyway, the next three things I have to show you are all basic tees. The top favorite, like this is actually top favorite piece of clothing for the entire year probably, is this baby tee from Abercrombie that's actually in the wash right now, so I'll put a picture on the screen. But it's this baby tee from Abercrombie, it's gray, it's ribbed, I have worn it, at least once or twice a week since I got it months ago. It is just the perfect layering piece. It's the perfect neckline, the perfect length. It's so comfortable, it fits so well, it's soft, it washes well. Like I just can't say enough good things about it. The other two shirts I'm gonna show you are both from Skims. They are, what are these called? Okay, I'll have to put the name on the screen, but they're just basic t-shirts in this really soft, stretchy fabric. They fit like a glove, they wash really well. They're very soft, they're so cozy, and I mean, they just go with literally everything. I'm really hoping I can finish filming this video before the sun goes down. Anyway, they go with everything and they're perfect layering pieces, so I have a white, a black, and a gray. I wear these shirts constantly. Another clothing favorite from this year is something that I'm actually wearing right now. It is this Princess Polly tank top. If you have followed me on TikTok, for longer than like 10 seconds, you have seen the gray Abercrombie shirt and you've seen this tank top. I have three of them because I wear them so often that I wasn't able to wash them fast enough. Perfect layering piece. I'm wearing one under this crop sweater right now, but I also wear them under little boleros and jackets, button downs. I just wear them constantly. I wear them lounging around the house. I wear them to go work out. I wear them with blazers, like just everything. I love this tank top because the back is wide enough that it doesn't show my bra straps and it's cropped but not so cropped that I feel weird wearing it out. Another clothing favorite is also something I'm wearing right now and it is these low-rise Bella jeans from Girlfriend. I got mine from Revolve. These are pricey. These are definitely the most expensive jeans that I have but I have worn them non-stop since I got them and I really didn't think I was gonna like low-rise jeans. I just 
I just never ever would have predicted that that would become a 2022 favorite for me, but I love them. They're baggy, but they're not too baggy. I love, they're a very soft denim. I like the rip in the knee. I just think they're very flattering. I feel like they make every outfit look a little bit more slouchy and cool and effortless, and I'm a huge fan. They're also not the lowest of low rise jeans. I feel like mid rise is probably more accurate, but whatever. Low rise baggy jeans just make outfits look cool. However, don't come for me. Lately, I've been looking at my skinny jeans and I just know skinny jeans are on their way back. I mean, I feel like jean trends cycle pretty quickly. So skinny jeans were always gonna come back, but I feel like 2023, they're coming back and I'm not mad about it. I am not mad about it. I feel like skinny jeans look so good with loafers and blazers and long coats. I just love them. So maybe this time next year, I'll be showing you guys skinny jeans. I don't know. Okay, we have some cosmetic products. This is the Lit Butter Balm from Summer Fridays. And I think this is just like the original scent. I don't think it really has a scent. It is a clear lip balm and it's amazing. I do really like the Rode Peptide ones. I'm actually almost done with this one and I'm gonna need to get a new one soon. It's not sticky, it glides on really smoothly. It's just a fantastic lip balm. I have two products from Hourglass. Again, if you follow me on TikTok, you've seen these about 100 million times. It is the Ambient Lighting Bronzer in Luminous Bronze Light. I've also shown these on my YouTube channel several times. And then the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush in, oh, this is not the right one. Oh shoot, I grabbed the wrong one. This is Iridescent Flash. Uh, I'll show it to you anyway. The one that I'm talking about though is called Sublime Flush and I've shown it on this channel and on my TikTok a hundred times. I do actually really like this one. It's just more of a deeper berry color and Sublime Flush is kind of a bright pinky orange. Hourglass Ambient Lighting Products blend like a dream on the face. They look so good on. They blend really beautifully together and they're shimmery without being glittery and they look just stunning on the skin. They look good in sunlight. I love them. And then I do have another favorite blush and this one is the iconic charlotte tilbury glowgasm beauty light wand in the shade pinkgasm and it is a beautiful extremely pigmented pink product it blends like a dream as long as you use a brush or a sponge or sorry not a sponge a brush or your fingers i did learn that the hard way if you try to blend this out using a wet sponge it will go patchy but if you use a brush or your fingertips it looks great when it comes to this versus the hourglass products i feel like it depends on what my skin is doing i have pretty dry skin so in the winter i like to use more cream products and then in the summer i can get away with using more powder so it just kind of depends on what my skin is doing at the moment but i love the way that both of these look but i really changed up my makeup routine like my everyday makeup this year and i now apply my blush much higher up on my cheekbones and i feel like my new makeup routine has also been a favorite because i just feel like it has literally changed the way my face looks so much another thing that has changed the way my face looks a lot is shaving off the tail ends of my eyebrows so that they appear a little bit more straighter and my eyebrows don't angle down as much. So usually my eyebrows actually go down pretty far here, but when I shave off the tail ends, it makes my entire eye area look a little bit more lifted, which in turn makes my whole face look more lifted. Some people literally get eyebrow lifts or threads or Botox around their eyebrows to get an eyebrow lift. And for me, shaving off the tail ends with just a regular eyebrow razor has done the trick. I have raved about this technique for an entire year. Let me know if you wanna see my process on an actual video. I just have this gold metal eyebrow razor that I got from Amazon because it has a refillable, or sorry, a replaceable blade, which I just thought would be better because I do this so often that it doesn't make sense to keep buying the plastic, like disposable eyebrow razors over and over again. So this is a little bit more of a higher quality one because I do this so often. I probably shave my eyebrows at least once a month. Love this. I'm never going back. It has changed the way my face looks so much. I just, I love it. I have another lip product. This is the Rare Beauty Kind Words Matte Lip Liner in Humble. I'm wearing it right now. It is just a really great color for my complexion. It's also just a good product. I mean, I love the way it wears. It really glides on the lips and it's smooth and it's creamy. It's pretty long lasting. This is pretty affordable. I think this is like $14 at Sephora, probably one of the cheapest lip liners in Sephora. And I think Rare Beauty is such a great brand. Everything I've tried from Rare Beauty has been amazing. And I feel like it's such a relief when you find a lip liner color that looks good on you. I also do like the Charlotte Tilbury um, Pillow Talk, of course. I know everyone loves that one, but I do like this one more. My last makeup fave is the Tartlet in Bloom palette. Mine's kind of dirty, so don't judge me. 
To be honest with you, I don't actually wear eyeshadow that often, but this palette has a pretty big mirror. And again, I'm sorry, it's dirty, but I actually just use this palette when I travel as my makeup mirror. And I also use it every day when I'm putting on mascara because I like to get like kind of close and the same thing with my eyebrows. So I use this every single day. And then when I wear eyeshadow, this is usually the eyeshadow that I'm wearing. I love Funny Girl, which is the gold shade. Put this on my inner corners. And then I also put these two shades um, in my crease if I happen to be wearing eyeshadow of that day. It's small and compact. It has such good neutral shades. The gold is beautiful. It just has blacks, browns, creams. It has a little mauve shade. It's just perfect. I always take this with me traveling because it's such a good size mirror. The sunlight is gonna be the death of me. Okay, we're still good. Okay, next I have Pavoy earrings. I'm wearing some right now. These are the 50 millimeter Pavoy hoops and I also have these ones which I think are the 20 millimeter Pavoy hoops that are this size. Pavoy is a brand that you can find on Amazon and they are amazing quality. I wear them constantly. These ones I have worn in the shower probably 25 times and they have not tarnished whatsoever. The reason why I'm saying that Pavoy is a favorite instead of just these earrings is that I also have a necklace and a ring from them that are also really good quality. And these are very, very affordable. They are a very shiny gold color. Like they're very, like when you look at them, it's very obvious that they're like, fake. I just love the way they look. I like these bigger hoops too. I honestly wear these every single day and I just feel like they add, I don't know, a little something. Also, this is like a totally random sidebar, but I think I want to get some more piercings in the new year and I think I'm going to get a cartilage piercing because I used to have a rook right here. I have a rook on this side along with my conch and then I used to have obviously this tragus and then a rook and then obviously I have like the double lobes in each ear. But sometime about a year and a half ago, this rook fell out. I think the earring broke. It fell out, it closed back up, and now I have extra space and I wanna get a cartilage piercing. So that was a little bit random, but I'm thinking about it. You should definitely check out Pavoy on Amazon if you're looking for affordable, but pretty high quality jewelry because I really like it. They have a Leo necklace that I have my eye on getting right now, which I don't need because I'm wearing a Leo necklace right now. I have like four Leo necklaces, but I guess it's a very Leo thing to see Leo jewelry and just really want it. Anyway, Pavoy, specifically this earrings, but just in general, so good. I have some hair related favorites. The first are these really skinny scrunchies. I love these because they are thin enough to function like a regular hair tie and they don't look like a scrunchie in your hair because they're pretty small. But because they have this slippy, silky covering, they're also really gentle on your hair. And I noticed that these cause fewer dents in my hair than if I were to just do a regular hair tie. They're really strong hold. I honestly should get the other color. I should, they have a lighter color. So now that my hair is not almost black, I guess I should get the other color, which is crazy. I've never had to do that before. But yeah, I really like these. I wear them pretty much every day. I also use these to tie up my hair at night because at night I put dry shampoo in my roots. I put oil in my ends and then I put my hair in one or two really loose braids just to kind of keep it from tangling and keep it from getting damaged while I sleep. And I use these little mini scrunchies for that. Another favorite are these metal jaw clips. If you have long and thick hair, you need to ditch your plastic jaw clips and get metal ones because they are so much stronger. They are so much like tighter and they keep your hair snapped. I kind of discovered that on accident. And at first I honestly didn't want to get the metal ones for a while because I thought that they would be uncomfortable or that they would hurt, but they're not and they hold so well. Because they're metal, the like the spring on them is really tightly wound and they just hold so well. Which kind of goes along with my next favorite, which is this one jaw clip hairstyle that I will quickly demonstrate for you kind of messily because I don't have a mirror. But basically I take my hair kind of at the middle of my head as if I was doing sort of a, a mid pony, twist it around my hands and I pin it up so that there's a little, let me get the tail end here. I pin it up so that there's a little bun thing poking out of the top and then I just pull down some front pieces. This is the hairstyle that I wore pretty much my entire last video. And I don't know, I just love it. It's a little bit, this is like a little bit taller of a bun on top than I typically do. I don't have a mirror, so I'm kind of like doing what I can. This is what it looks like. 
These metal claw clips make it last forever. Not really a girl who likes her hair up, but when I wear it like this, I do really like my hair up. I like having hair that you can still see from the front view. And yeah, it just lasts all day. And honestly, wearing my hair like this has also helped me extend my time between washes because this is a hairstyle that works great with dirty hair. I also will use like pomade or wax to slick down the front if like I'm having really, really bad hair day. So yeah, I love that. I honestly wear my hair like this almost every day because even if I'm wearing my hair down like I am today if I need to put it up for something like eating or doing the dishes or something this is the way I do my hair because it's so fast it's so easy and it looks cute another fave are these glasses from I buy direct these are the chillax frame and this is the tortoise shell one but at the start of the year I had the clear one and then my prescription changed so I got the tortoise shell one with my new prescription I love these frames I feel like they are the right size for my face, a good shape for my face shape. They were extremely affordable. I think these frames are, I think like 20 bucks and then the prescription lenses were another 30. No, not even. No, I think it was even less than that. I got two pairs of prescription lenses from iBuyDirect for less than $50. I did have a 10% off code. I'll try to find one for you guys when I bought these. But yeah, it was like less than 50 bucks for two pairs of glasses. They are prescription and blue light blocking and I love the shape. I think they're really cute. I don't always love to wear my glasses on camera because I don't know, it's just like a weird insecurity that I have, but I love iBuyDirect because they're very affordable. I've had the opportunity to work with them a couple times this year. They're super nice. They're great to work with. They're very easy going, very chill, just a nice team. And I genuinely love the products. And yeah, my eyesight is getting worse with every single passing day I actually need bifocals i found out but yeah another fave is the living proof perfect hair day dry shampoo and this is one of the best dry shampoos i've ever ever tried in my life it blends out pretty well in my dark roots i like to put it on in the evening and then sleep in it and then overnight it looks like my hair just came out of the shower this one's empty yeah this one's empty i need to get a new one um but yeah i think i've repurchased this i don't know multiple times multiple times this year i love it another random fave but i've really loved it this year is the therabreath mouthwashes this one is the whitening one this one is the healthy smile one i also like the blue one that's like the fresh breath it's weird to have a mouthwash be a holy grail product but once you try these you're not gonna go back. You can find them at just like Target, Walmart, whatever, CVS. They don't have alcohol in them, so they don't burn your mouth and they don't leave that like alcohol-y aftertaste. This one whitens without peroxide, no, art no alcohol, no artificial flavors or colors. I genuinely love these. If you haven't tried TheraBreath, I would really recommend it. Y'all, I gotta hurry. The sun is going down. Luckily, I only have a couple more things. These smiley face slippers are potentially the greatest find of this year for me. I've had them for a full year. I think I literally ordered these on January 1st last year and they have held up amazingly well. I wear them pretty much every single day. They are cute. Every time I look at them, I get happy. I think I've talked about them in favorites videos before, but I just genuinely wear them every day and they're comfy and they're so, like they're wide enough to feel very cozy. I'm contemplating taking these home with me to my parents' house for Christmas because that is how much I love these slippers. They're this cozy terry cloth material and that also means that they wash really well. You can just throw them in the washing machine. You just get to look down and see this beautiful smiling face every single day and I love it. I have three more things that are a little bit more absolute Abstract. I can't show them to you, but I'm just gonna run through them rapid fire. First one is Instacart. If you have been watching me for a while, you know that because of a bad car accident that I had, I really struggle with driving anxiety and I'm bad at it. I am a bad driver and it, my driving anxiety has actually been so bad that I don't even have a car anymore. One of my 2023 goals is to really focus on healing my relationship with the road and with driving because it is extremely inconvenient to live in this world and not feel comfortable driving. I mean, I'm very blessed to live in a pretty walkable area. Brief pause while I try to see if I can set up an extra light. Yeah, so I live in a walkable area, which is amazing, but inevitably there are errands that you can't really run unless you're driving. And I'm, there's only so much that an e-bike or public transit or even just taking an Alto or an Uber if you don't have Alto in your city. There's only so much that can do and I have to ask Matt to drive me a lot of places and he's amazing and he does it and he doesn't complain but it's not convenient for either one of us and I really need to fix my relationship with driving. However, in 
the meantime, Instacart has been a huge favorite. It's basically this app where you can order your groceries online. It's a grocery delivery service, and I actually pay for the premium membership, which is I think 90 bucks a year, but then you get free delivery. And it has saved us so much time, so much time. I use Instacart every single week. They have pretty much all the grocery stores that I like. I mean, we usually do our big grocery shop at Aldi's every week, and they have Aldi's, so cool. They don't have everything, like they don't have Trader Joe's, they don't have Whole Foods, but they have like Safeway, Fresh Market, CVS. Um, they even have stores like Michael's, and this also depends on your area. So if you, I don't know, it depends on where you live. But yeah, I love Instacart. It's just grocery delivery. You can schedule when your deliveries are gonna happen. You can usually place an order and get your food in two or to three hour. I have a lot of friends who use it as well because you can be at work in the morning and be like, oh shoot, I don't have groceries to make dinner and place an order and say, okay, I want this to be delivered at you know, 6 p.m. today, because that's when you get home from work, and there you go, grocery shopping is done. For me, it's probably the most valuable subscription service that I have, outside of things like Spotify or Hulu or whatever. It, I would say it's my favorite subscription service, and we get so much use out of it. It's honestly a lifesaver. I have a music favorite this year. I don't usually discover new artists that I love. To be honest, my music taste has really not changed and since I was a teenager. I never really share my full Spotify wrapped with you guys because it is literally the exact same every single year. My Spotify wrapped is always Ed Sheeran, Hozier, Adele, and then usually either Taylor Swift or Harry Styles every single year. Hozier, Adele, Ed Sheeran, they run my life. Also Bon Iver. Bon Iver is always in there too. And that's just that. I don't really know what it says about me that Bon Iver and Hozier are two of my favorite artists of all time. It probably says that there's a really good reason that I am on Lamotrigin. But either way, I do have a music favorite this year because I discovered Noah Kahan because of TikTok. He's the guy that sings Stick Season, but if you haven't listened to the rest of his music, you really should. He has such good vibes. He's this guy from Vermont and a lot of his music is just him on pretty simplified instruments. And they're good. They're like a little bit angsty, a little bit folksy, a little bit indie, a little bit super catchy. Um, he has a lot of hometown angst, which I very much relate to. And yeah, I love his music. I actually got tickets to see him next year. I'm really excited. And yeah, it's really, it's rare for me to discover any music artists that I absolutely love. I love this guy. Love him. We are coming to the end. This is the last one. And this one is kind of random. One of my favorites this year has been Instagram stories. I love Instagram stories. They're so fun. I feel like it's an easy way to talk to you guys. That's kind of low maintenance. And I, I know a lot of people put like a ton of effort into their Instagram stories. I would say I put medium effort into my Instagram stories, but I like Instagram and YouTube more than TikTok. I said this in my last video, but TikTok is by far the social media platform that causes me the most anxiety. And for me, it's the most toxic. And I know that's not the same for everyone. I know for some people it's like Instagram, for some people it's, you know, Pinterest, whatever. For me, it's TikTok. And Instagram stories are a really convenient and easy way for me to talk to you guys more directly and also to provide more like up-to-date info on what I'm doing and I don't know, things that I love. Like sometimes I really like something and I wanna talk to you guys about it, but I'm probably not gonna film an entire TikTok about it. So I'll just put it on my Instagram story. Wow, I love stories. They're so much fun. I love watching other people's stories. It's like little picture vlogs of everybody's day. I love seeing people's recommendations. I love when people post like the Spotify playlist that they're listening to. I love seeing those little trends where it's like tap to add, I don't know, a picture of you and your boyfriend when you started dating versus now. And I love seeing people posting that. It's also a really easy way for me to provide direct links to you guys because TikTok does not allow clickable links in comments or in captions, very annoying. If you comment on a TikTok and you ask for a link, and I direct you to either like to know it or Instagram. I'm not trying to be annoying. It's just that you cannot give clickable links on TikTok. And I really wish they would change that. The linking feature on Instagram stories is super easy and is a very efficient and fast way to share direct links with you guys. So I love that. Okay, and that is a wrap on my 2022 favorites. It makes me happy talking about these because all of these things have just brought me so much joy this year. And I can't finish this video without saying that another favorite from 2022 would definitely be you guys. Every single person who has shown me love and support and kindness this year, it just means the world to me. There's so much negativity online and I see my fair share of it, but there are so many of you who go out of your way to make me feel supported and loved and like the content that I put out is genuinely entertaining and inspiring and helpful to you. 
and I just, I really can't thank you enough. It means the absolute world to me. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching. I'm really excited to kick off 2023. I have loads of ideas. A lot of you guys in my last video had a lot of positive things to say about the idea of me kind of easing back from TikTok and leaning more in towards Instagram and YouTube and then also starting a podcast. Those are definitely goals of mine for 2023. I hope that they happen. By the time you see this, I think I'll probably post this video right before New Year's Eve, but I'm filming it the day before I go home to my parents' house for Christmas. So I'm gonna go edit this video pack for Christmas and I just wanted to wish you guys the happiest of holidays and I hope that the end of the year and start of the new one brings you a lot of peace and joy and coziness and just the best vibes. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.